Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Leave Insert Higher Level Probability question from the 2016 paper, and um, it was question 5 on paper 2. In an archery competition, the team consisting of John, David and Mike will win first prize if at least two of them hits the bullseye with their last arrows. From past experience, they know that the probability that John, David and Mike will hit the bullseye on their last arrow is one-fifth, one-sixth and one-quarter, respectively. Complete the table below to show all the ways in which they could win first prize. Okay. So let's let's dissect him a small bit. Uh, Mike will will win first prize if at least two of them hit the bullseye. So at least two. So all three can hit. That's what at least two means, or just two of them. So the probabilities then that they hit the bullseye are a fifth, a sixth, and a quarter. Okay. So let me jot that down. So. The probability that, who's that first guy, John, hits is a fifth. The probability, therefore, that John not hits must be four fifths. Okay, because probability always has to add up to one. He either hits that bullseye or he doesn't. Okay, um, the probability that, who's the next guy, David hits is a sixth. The probability that David not hit is five sixths. Okay, again has to add up to one. The probability that Mike hits is a quarter. The probability that Mike not hit is three quarters. Okay. So that's me setting up the question um, for the the um, they hit or they don't hit. Okay. So complete the table below to show all the ways they could win more first prize. Okay. Well, I can see that John could hit, David could hit. They're a tick, so they're a hit, and the X is a miss. So Mike has missed that one. Well, another way is John could miss and David and Mike could uh, could hit. Or who David could miss and John and Mike could hit. Or, of course, all three could hit it. Okay, that looks good. Hence or otherwise, find the probability that they win the competition. Well, they'll win the competition... either through way one, way two, way three, or way four. Okay, that word or always means add. Okay, um, it's the or, or law of, of probability. Um, because we're happy whether they win way one or way two. So we'll add the probabilities, gives us more chance. So way one then. So we have um, way one. We have John hitting, David hitting, Mike not hitting. So John hitting, David hitting, Mike not hitting. OK, so we need and we're going to use the and law of probability in, in, in all the different ways. John to hit and David to hit and Mike not to hit. OK, which means that we multiply those probabilities. So it's a fifth by a sixth by three quarters. Way two, we have John not hitting. So it's four fifths. We have David hitting, which is a sixth. We have Mike hitting, which is a quarter. You can see now why I wrote all of these down here, just for convenience. Way three, John is hitting. David is not hitting. 
uh, Mike is hitting. Our way forward, they're all hitting. So we have a fifth by a sixth by a quarter. Okay, so I'm just scanning across for two small numbers, a big number, big number, two small numbers. Yeah, they look good. Okay, so we need to put them then into our calculator to see what we get. Um, I'm going to do it piece by piece. So for that top one, I get 3 over 120 or 1 over 40. For the second one, I'm getting 1 over 30. Uh, for the third one, I'm getting 1 over, what's that, 24. And then 1 over by 6 of the 30, 120. Okay, and when you add them together, then the probability that they'll win the competition is 13 over 120. Okay. Right, the next part of that question. So two events, A and B, are represented in the diagram. The probability of A intersection B is 0 0.1. It's shown here, it's the overlap. The probability of E of B not A, so this out here is B not A, because we don't want to include that, that circle B A. So B not A is out here, that's 0 0.3. A not B is out here, that's X. Write the probability of A in terms of X and hence or otherwise. Find the value of X for which the events A and B are independent. Okay, so some rules of, of independent events that you need to know. And these, not in any log tables, you have to know them off. So you have two conditional rules of probability where you're saying that the probability of A knowing B has occurred is still the same as probability of A. So in other words, if the ben events are independent, it means one event has no bearing or no influence on the other event. So the very fact that B has already occurred won't have any impact on A if the events are independent. And that's why the probability of A given B has occurred is the same as just the probability of A on its own is a way of showing that the events are independent. Of course, you can write it backwards. The probability that B occurs given A has occurred is the same as probability of B. And then the third rule, the probability of A intersection B is the same as the probability of A by the probability of B. Okay, so conditional probabilities, I would argue, not much good to me in this question because I don't have any information about uh, conditional events. So I'm going to use this bottom one here. So the probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A probability of B. I know this holds true because the question has told me that they're independent. I have given, I have been given an intersection which is another reason why uh, this one jumps into mind. So that's 0 0.1. The probability of A, right, you need to be careful with this because that is the probability of A. It's that entire circle that I've just drawn there in green. Okay, so the probability of A is X plus 0 0.1. The probability of A is X plus 0 0.1. In the same way, the probability of B is that full circle there, which is equal to 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1 to be equal to 0 0.4. Okay, I'm going to bring him forward before it only because it looks easier when you're multiplying brackets and the number is, is before the bracket rather than after it. And then I'm just going to multiply these together one by that and then that by that. Okay, so that I get 0 0.1 being equal to 0.4x plus 0 0.04. I want to solve it for x, so I want to strip away everything off this side, so minus 0 0.04 from both sides, or of course bring it over whichever way you do it. 0 0.1 minus that is 0 0.06 is equal to 0.4x divide by the number in front of x. 
so that you get x being equal to put that into a calculator 0 0.15 and just check that again Five. So that's what my x is. Okay, so write p of a in terms of x. It's p of a in terms of x. And hence or otherwise, find the value of x that makes it independent, okay? So be careful because it could be very easy in this question to assume there's nothing outside in the universal set and to go 0 0.3 there, 0 0.1 here and 0 0.6 here. So watch that. You have to use the fact that they're independent. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice. In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.